In this set of notes, I'm going to be going over macromolecules, or also known as the biomolecules, which really set the foundation for cellular biology. So let's go over the outline. I'm going to start with an introduction to elements and molecules, sort of the basic chemistry understanding we need to have for this section. And then for each of the four biomolecules, I'm going to do a breakdown of their structure and function. So we have carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So you can pause at each slide in this video and fill in the guided notes that are found in the description below, or you can watch it straight through to just have a better knowledge of macromolecules. So we do have to start with the basics of chemistry. So all matter, which is anything that has mass and takes up space, so basically almost anything, is made up of atoms. And when you have a type of atom, it is called an element. And there are 118 known types of atoms. So this is the periodic table of elements showing the 118 types of atoms that make up our planet and knowable universe for right now. The good news is living organisms are really composed of only six of these elements. So out of 118, all living organisms, the majority of their makeup comes from just six of those. That is gonna be carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So this is really the main components of our chemistry. So these elements aren't going to just stay separate atoms. They're going to form bonds with each other and form compounds and molecules. Like H2O, we are taking the elements hydrogen and oxygen and bringing them together. And we're going to make bigger compounds and molecules and give us new properties of substances. When we have a macromolecule, macro meaning large, it's a combination of a lot of atoms, a large number of atoms. And they're actually gonna be in these repeated subunits that we're gonna call monomers. So you can see in the image here, we have a chain of multiple repeated units. And then we have another one here. These are macromolecules. They are still made up of these atoms, these certain elements but we're gonna be putting them into larger subunits that then combine together to make these very large molecules. There are four macromolecules, also known as biomolecules, that make up living organisms. So bio meaning life, these are the four major molecules that make up life. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each one of them, talk about their monomers, what elements they have, their main function and give you some examples so that you have a better understanding of where we find these in our living organisms. So our first macromolecule or biomolecule are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates consist of the elements of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Only these three elements make up a carbohydrate. They are always going to be in a two to one ratio for hydrogens to carbons. So you can see here I put CH2O, showing that we always have two hydrogens for the one carbon. The monomer, their subunit that builds them up are the monosaccharides. So saccharides means sugar, mono meaning single. So a single sugar is the building block and we can make large chains of these. So in this image here, you'll see the structure of a single monosaccharide. And this, if we repeat it over and over again, is going to be um, a carbohydrate as well. Just the monomer over and over again, making a polymer of that substance. The main function of carbohydrates is a short-term energy source for cells. We use carbohydrates and break it down through cellular respiration to make our ATP. There's also a carbohydrate called cellulose that actually makes up the cell wall of plant cells as well. So it serves mostly as an energy source and it can also have a structural benefit. So we find these in sugars, anything sweet that we eat or drink, starches like your breads, your rice, potatoes, those large grains 
those are going to be very long chains of many monosaccharides. So the more monomers you have, sort of the starchier that food gets. Glucose is the one that our cells use to make ATP. And then again, cellulose found in plant cells. And those are just some examples of some common carbohydrates. The next biomolecule is called lipids. Lipids also consist of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. However, we no longer have that two to one rule for hydrogens to carbons. So we just need to know that we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen as the three elements that make up lipids. The monomer of lipids has two parts. We have what's called the glycerol, which is gonna be sort of the backbone. And then we have the fatty acid tails. So in the image here, this shows the glycerol. And then this would be long chains of carbons and hydrogens making the fatty acid tails, but I didn't have the room for that whole structure. We can also see here, the glycerol would be attached to a phosphate here, and these are fatty acid tails coming out as well. Again, you can see the whole thing is made up of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. Now the function of lipids also deals with energy but this is your long-term energy storage for cells. So you would like to have carbs for useful energy during movement, getting prepared. For a marathon, you would eat carbohydrates the day before. You wouldn't want a heavy amount of lipids because they're not gonna be useful. This is gonna be long-term energy storage slowly over time. So animals that hibernate put on lots of fat so that they have sort of this slow burn of energy while they're in hibernation. It also is the main component of cell membranes. And all cells have a cell membrane made up of a phospholipid bilayer. So we find it in cells and then it's going to also be our long-term energy storage. So examples include saturated fats and unsaturated fats, which have structural differences that can make them healthier or unhealthier for the human body. Oils, any oils that we use are lipids. And then of course, I'm gonna say phospholipids again because it's that cell membrane uh, one that we use. The next biomolecule is the proteins. Now proteins have a couple more elements in them. They are still made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but they also have nitrogen and sulfur in them. So this will be the first biomolecule where we see nitrogen and sulfur be a component. The monomer of proteins are amino acids. The amine group is where we have the nitrogen. So you can see here, the carbons are gonna be these points. So we have the carboxyl group that has carbon, our hydrogens and oxygens over here. We have our nitrogens. And then this is an amino acid that happens to have sulfur in it as well. So amino acids, we can put long chains of amino acids together and form several different types of proteins that make up living structures. So proteins do not have anything to do as an energy source, such as lipids and carbohydrates did. Proteins serve as our structural components. So they're going to give us the, the features that give us our support, our build, muscle, bones. Um, for birds, you're gonna have feathers, hair. The, the meat that we eat is going to be proteins, all of the structural components. They're also going to serve as enzymes, which are necessary to speed up chemical reactions in living organisms. So proteins are vital to the health and structure of a living organism. So we, we do need lots of protein, but it's important to remember it doesn't have any energy purpose for us. That's gonna be carbohydrates and lipids. And I already mentioned uh, the examples when I was going over the function, but some of foods that you'd find it in would be beans, eggs, meat, and of course, we have the enzymes. We have so many of them that make up a lot of the proteins that are in us. 
The final biomolecule is the nucleic acids. We see again, we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and now phosphorus. So this will be the only biomolecule that uses the element phosphorus. Its monomer are nucleotides, and the nucleotides look like this, where we have a sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. So we have our phosphate element over here, our nitrogen element here, and our carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens are all over. So we have repeated units of these nucleotides will give us a nucleic acid. The function of nucleic acids is the storage and transfer of our genetic information. So it doesn't actually go into any of our final structures. It doesn't provide any energy, but without nucleic acids, nothing else would be there because we wouldn't have the instructions and information we need to build those structures or to do those processes and make energy. So there's only two examples of nucleic acids. We have DNA and RNA. So those are our molecules used for all of the genetic information and how we get that gen genetic information around our cells and coded into those final products. So it's really important to understand the basic structures and functions of these four biomolecules because it serves as the foundation to understanding the rest of biology. There's units on enzymes and units on cell transport in the cell membrane. Cellular respiration and photosynthesis are processes in how we get our carbohydrates and then how we use those carbohydrates to make usable energy. DNA, we talk about mutations and DNA replication and of course protein synthesis. And all of these processes depend on these basic molecules. So when you have a better understanding of their structures and what their main jobs are, it helps build all of the foundation for all of the other topics we cover in biology. So I hope that you have a better understanding of the four biomolecules group. If you have any questions or want me to review anything in further detail, please let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.